Hey, what's up guys? You're Beam guys. Sam here today with another new Revit tutorial. Now, in our today's tutorial, I'm going to walk you through these steps to do the quantity takeoff on your Revit model. Also, most importantly, I'm going to show you what's the exact differences between the quantity takeoff and also the material takeoff. So to show you guys how to do this, let's get into our model. So as you can see here, this is the exact same model that we already worked with it on our energy optimization model. So as you can see here, I already um, selected one element among all the categories that you can simply do the uh, takeoff on it. As you can see, this is the wall that we're going to speak with it. So here we do have both normal wall schedule quantity stuff plus wall material takeoff. So let me just get into the wall schedule first because that's way more simple to see. As you can see here, in this specific project, overall we're having two different types of wall. One is for our interior one and the other one is the exterior wall. So as you can see for our exterior wall overall, we can see that it does have somewhere around 40 meters in terms of length which basically cost us somewhere around $800. Also, at the same time, we're having our interior wall, which is somewhere around 21 meters in terms of length, which is gonna cost us somewhere around $652, right? So that is what all what you can see from the wall schedule. On the other hand, what you can see from wall material takeoff Unlike the wall schedule, you wouldn't be able to see exactly the type of the walls. In fact, you wouldn't even see that what they sort of like specific materials are getting assigned to which wall. So what you can see is that among all these materials that you can use, for example, for our brick, overall, I'm using somewhere around 149 square meters, which it's going to cost me somewhere around to $981, right? So as you can see, the main difference between the material takeoff and normal schedule quantities is that it highly depends on the um, basically target that you're going to follow on the task that you wish to be done. So let me put it in this way. Uh, first of all, you need to realize that whether you just wanted to order some sort of prefabricated stuff, let's say like in our case, the wall. So let's say you just like wish to order the uh, prefabricated wall on your side and you what you need to do is to simply just know that from uh, what type of the wall, how much uh, in terms of length you're just simply receiving and how much you're paying, right? On the other hand, in, if your case is more about the, let's say, uh, ordering the materials and then put them all together and coming up with your own walls. So in this case, you need to basically order each and every single material from different shops. So you need to exactly know that how much exactly brick you're going to need and how much you're going to pay for that. Apart from that, how about the concrete? How about the insulations and also the other stuff? So in this case, you have to go mostly with material takeoff. So that is like the, more, the most important difference that you need to know. So in order to exactly show you how to do this, now I'm going to walk you through the each and every single step that you need to do to come up both with the wall schedule and also with the wall material takeoff. So let's start with the wall schedule. As you can see here, this is our model that we're working on, right? So the very once you already come up with your model and the whole modeling part is done, the very first thing that you need to do is to simply come on on view here. So you just you just simply uh, come to view here, and as you can see here, we do have the icon for schedules. So simply click on it. As you can see, we can either go with schedule quantities or material takeoff. So first, let's go with the schedule quantities. If you simply click on schedule quantities, among the all category that you, you basically can choose from, we're gonna go in this case with our wall. So simply click on walls. Now here on schedule properties on fills, Basically, you would be able to choose among all those sort of parameters that you wish to see on your schedule quantities sheet. So among them, uh, the very first parameter that I'm going to choose is going to be the type or the name of the wall that I'm going to work with it. 
So here, I just like need to navigate among them to find the family and name. So then I'm gonna go with family and type. That's gonna be my first parameter that I'm gonna need in this. Also at the same time, I need to have the cost. So simply click on cost, count, and also at the same time, I need to have the length. Later on, we need to know that this wall is starting exactly from which level ending to which level as well. So simply just go first with the base constraint and also with the top constraint. So those can be just like simply all what you need to know. If you want to know like more information about, let's say, the type of the wall or if there's any sort of like parameter that you simply wish to add on your scheduling, you can simply add that on. And also you can just like simply arrange the ordering. If you wish to, let's say, have the cost after the count, you can just simply use these arrows to basically change the organization of them. So uh, I just wanted to have them in this way. At the same time, I also need to define a new parameter. So here, as you can see here, the cost basically doesn't make sense anything, right? So what's, what's the meaning of like cost here? What does it sound this? So to basically define a parameter that basically can uh, sort of like get our scheduling out of that, we need to define an cost per area or per length, right? So to do this, you just need to come on fx here which is the add calculated parameter so simply i'm going to click on this this uh, window is simply getting popped up here so you can just simply name the parameter that you wish to create this one that i'm going to name is going to be cost per length so simply I'm just going to choose that and also I'm going to go with formula here. The discipline simply is going to be on common, but the type is super important. So the type should be one of those sort of parameters that later on you're going to use that for formula. Since it's going to be cost per length, so then I'm going to go with length. That is the most important thing that you guys need to know. Here, if you simply click on this uh, small rectangle here, you would be able to choose cost. Then simply you just add times and length as easy as you can see here. So here, that's how you would be, how you basically need to formulate what you need to know here. So simply gonna click on okay. And also, I guess like the place is quite good. So what I need to do is to simply hit on OK. So that's what you're going to see on our wall schedule. You can definitely rename here the title and put whatever you wish to have. As you can see, I would be able to even extend the columns here to have the full names getting as well. So first of all the most important thing that i need to have is to be able to basically sort my wall scheduling so to sort my scheduling i can simply go on edit here so you simply click on edit and here i'm just going to put it on family and type it's going to be ascending is all fine i'm going to put it on footer here and that's what you need to have so simply click on ok so now as you can see we are having the all these types of walls simply getting organized by name here. Another important thing that basically is super important is the cost. So I'm going to show you that what's these costs basically or like from where you, you would be able to um, just like put on the value for the each and every single wall per, per type of the wall actually. So if you just simply come on 3D and simply click on this wall, simply go on edit type here. And then if you simply just scroll down, you would be able to see the cost here. So basically per each, uh, you can just like assume that in this way that per each meter of this specific type of wall, that is the cost that you're gonna pay. Or 
any other parameter that you better think it might be working for you but usually like we go um, with length in this sort of case that you're gonna just see the whole wall with all the wall compositions as only one single element so let's let us just like assume that for this specific type of wall per each meter that is the price that we're going to pay and then later on according to the formula that we have we would be able to basically have the whole sum up so simply click on ok let's get back on our wall schedule here as you can see this is the cost so in terms of cost we are all fine length base constraint, top constraint, so you would be able to exactly distinguish between the types of the wall that you're having in different levels. And this is the cost per length. So simply the very first thing that you realize is that definitely the unit is not working out. The unit should be in currency. So what I suggest you guys is to simply go on fields here, and then later on you would be able to click on formatting here. So then for cost per length, simply click on cost per length, go on field format and simply uncheck this box. You can simply put this on non and that will be all. Also here, it's better to put that on calculate totals. So that's exactly what you need to do in terms of cost per length. Also for the length, I wish to know the total as well. Um, Oh, so that would be like all fine let's go on sorting and group here also i would like to have the length getting descending organized as well so that would be all good let's click on ok so as you can see here for this specific type of wall we're having almost around 40 meters of this specific wall and this is the um overall price that we're paying for this specific wall also the same is getting happened for this type of interior wall so that's exactly what you need to do to come up with your prices so that was exactly for the wall schedule as easy as you can see now let's switch on wall material takeoff and see that if we want to know exactly if we want to realize that each and every single wall composition of this specific wall, if we are just gonna put it, let's say in a way that how much it's gonna cost us, then how we would be able to image this. So simply you need to go on view again. You need to click on schedules again. This time, instead of going simply with schedule and quantities, I simply gonna go with material takeoff. So simply click on material takeoff among all these categories i simply gonna go with walls so simply click on ok here in this case in instead of just simply go with cost and all the sort of parameters that you just saw in this case since we're doing the material takeoff i'm just gonna go with all those sort of parameters that is having the materials initially so simply click on material area material cost material name also let's to ha let's have the length so here you can see the length again what's important is to know the base constraint and the top constraint so i'm simply going to go up to find the base constraint and also the top constraint so i would exactly know that this wall is getting assigned to which floor so that is also the top constraint so that, that would be all. Also at the same time, again, we need to define a new parameter, right? Because again, this cost wouldn't uh, exactly make sense, right? We need to exactly define that this is gonna be per this square meters in terms of area, in terms of length, or any sort of parameters that you simply wish to have. In this case, instead of length, this time we're gonna go with area. So we're gonna see that per each exactly uh, material how much in terms of uh, square meters or in terms of area we're gonna pay for them so simply click on fx here again to formulate your formula here so in this case here I simply gonna add area per or let's put it cost per area as you can see 
again I, I need to make sure that the type of the material at least is going to be from one of the above so simply go with area here and then here down there for formula simply click there choose material area times material cost that's all you need to do in terms of calculating your formula simply click on ok and that would be all now you're all ready to basically click on ok but earlier than doing that i simply just wanted to make sure that the material name is going first click on ok so this is the list of all wall composition wall compositions that you have in your project but as you can see, nothing is organized here. So we need to basically put them in an organization. So to do that, again, we just like need to simply go on sorting and grouping here. Simply go up there, put it on material name, footer here, title count and totals would be all fine. Put it on ascending, simply click on OK. So as you can see, all of these sort of like materials is getting simply organized now. now what is exactly important again is to make sure that the whole cost per area parameter is working well so again what i need to do is to simply go on formatting here by clicking there just simply uh, scroll down till you find cost per area click on field format make sure to put it on two decimal places first and also put it on none Guys, it's super important to make sure that your rounding is working well, because if that's not fine, if it's not accurately getting set, then you're, you shall have like a bit hard time. Your calculation would not basically fit. So make sure that you're choosing the right rounding always. Simply click on OK. Again here, what I need to have is to have the calculating totals. So simply going to put it there. For material area, that is exactly the same thing that I wish to have. Also on sorting and grouping, I prefer to have the material area getting descending. So simply going to click on OK. And now, as you can see here, as an example for concrete masonry overall, we're having 149 square meters of this specific material. And this is the final cost. That we need to pay for this so as you can see it's super easy and simple and you would be able to exactly distinguish that from which source of material how much i'm going to pay for that and how much i'm just simply going to get shipped to my site field also at the same time if you simply wish to change the organization of this text you can simply click on the column simply go up there for example you can put it on center as you can see So basically, that's all what you need to know in terms of the um, takeoff and quantities and scheduling stuff. So almost that is all what you need to know in terms of the wall scheduling and all of the material takeoff stuff. But the last point that I just like need to make sure that you guys are all good at it is to basically uh, driving your attention on material area here at on the specific parameter that you can see here The rounding is not exactly working out So almost like we're not having any sort of rounding on here and definitely that's the reason why the cost period is not Accurately getting calculated now. So to solve this problem what you need to do is to simply go on formatting here on the mat material area simply bring the your point we are on material area and simply click on field format here just make sure to uncheck this box and put it on two decimal places and simply click on ok another one and now as you can see the material area is also working precisely so then as the result you can see that the cost per area is getting updated so you can simply refer and relate the same sort of story to all the sort of categories that we have. So if you want to do the same case on walls, on roofs and ceilings and floors, that is exactly what you need to do. So whenever you need to know stuff regarding specifically the material compositions, you definitely need to go with material takeoff. If you just wanted to know stuff, the elements as a whole element, so definitely you need to go with the normal schedule and quantity. 
So I hope you guys find this video useful and uh, please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done it yet as I'm always constantly updating the contents to make sure that you guys are getting to learn new stuff and tricks. Thank you.